Hi, I'm Rachel, and before I take you to my uh, filmed vlog footage of uh, the Gaithersburg Book Festival, I thought I'd highlight a recent video by Eric Carl Anderson because it uh, plays into what I was talking about in my uh, booktube watching tag when I was being all concerned about my subscriber count and what that meant for me as a booktuber. And in Eric's uh, video, Is Booktube Killing My Love of Reading, he talks about the perniciousness, really, of uh, social media. That I mean, it's great that we're on here, but it always uh, fosters some sort of uh, competitive air and being worried about how you stand versus all of the other people making videos around you. And he also talks a little bit about how some of those feelings might uh, mess with your love of reading and how much that sucks because, as he and other people have pointed out, one of the greatest things about BookTube is just uh, being able to share your passion for reading and for what you're reading and why that excites you. Uh, and so anyway, I'll link that down below because I think it's a, a pertinent part of the conversation. And to go on from there, something that excited me very much this weekend was the Gaithersburg Book Festival. It's an annual book festival that takes place in uh, a small part of Maryland in the county I live in, actually. Uh, I think this is the ninth year. And uh, it's getting to be quite big and quite popular. We've attracted such names as uh, Madeline Miller and Alice McDermott. Anyway, I went to pick up some books for my niece and nephew. I picked up a book for myself. I attended a writing workshop, so that was pretty cool. And uh, got a little bit of footage of a rainy day book festival, which hopefully turned out okay. <laughs> and I'll take you there right now. So we're, we're going to hit back on these redeeming qualities concepts because um, for me the, the thing in Cotton Mouse is that Jody, for everything else, comes across completely as she's a good mother. She she is trying to do the best for her child, even though that you know she she sort of resents the fact that she allowed herself to become a, a single mother, um, and it has severely limited her choices. And you give her this wonderful, heartfelt um, discussion of how she came to be in her situation, and it completely sells. I'm like, I'm there. I, I understand, right? Um, uh, but of course, that was before people started to die. <laughs> so, so she could sell it pretty well at that point in the book. Um, but the point is that that's a powerful um, uh, motivator for your for your audience to to see Jody as more than just you know what happens later on. And so there is that that you've you've gotten your reader to see that she's more than just chicken's meth and you know and <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and that was really what I always wanted to go to because I'm not interested in black and white kind of good versus evil. I really like staying in that gray area. Um, and a lot of this is because I had one of my favorite cousins, he was actually a meth dealer. And he had a very tragic ending, unfortunately. 
but he was the nicest guy you ever met. He was so kind. He, he was sweet, and I loved him, and I just, as soon as he started to make these really bad decisions, you still loved him, and you still wanted him to do well, and even up to the last time I saw him, when he was alive, it, you know, I just, I felt that warmth from him, and it's just like, damn, you know, it's like, if you had taken these qualities and applied them in a more positive way, you could have been something, and so to me, that's, it's tragic, and so I, I want, I think because I know people, and I've grown up around people who make really bad decisions constantly, just having a character where people can try to empathize or at least understand how someone could make these decisions, um, that was important to me. Because I, I don't want just good versus evil. I'm, I just don't, I'm not interested in that. And I'm back. Well, not really, because I didn't really leave this uh, intro, outro uh, filming location. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought uh, to end this video I would give you a closer look of the three books that I bought and got signed. This is How to Trick the Tooth Fairy by Erin Daniel Russell, which I got signed for my niece. Uh, it comes included with these stickers and this bookmark. Uh, those are the sort of details I think my niece would really love. I love them anyway. And uh, anyway, the uh, whole idea behind this book made me think a bit about my niece. She likes to be a little bit cunning sometimes, and I think she'd always like a good tale about how a little girl can uh, play pranks on the tooth fairy, especially when she's getting to that age herself when maybe she'll start losing a few teeth. I uh, actually, I guess I should look into exactly when that happens <laughs> in the developmental stage. <laughs> but still, I think uh, this. Uh, really pretty sparkly book will be right up her alley. I hope so. And then this board book is for my nephew Owen, whose due date is in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so I'm going back to uh, the drawing board of uh, what books might be appropriate for that age group. So I thought uh, things that highlight uh, shapes and colors and, and objects and uh, animals would be good. So the whole book is about the blackbird versus his environment. Uh, yeah, so. Anyway, the uh, author and I guess most of the illustrator, Steve Light, uh, talked uh, in a session that I went to actually about uh, the illustrative uh, properties. Uh, he actually made all of these illustrations using cardboard cutouts, which was pretty cool. And he also did a little bit of drawings for uh, the kids in the audience, too. And I can't wait to hand this off to my nephew. I hope I'm right about his interest at this developmental stage. <laughs> and finally, I veered way into adult territory with the book that I got for myself. This is Cotton Mouths by Kelly J. Ford. And uh, her panel discussion was with another Southern writer. This is a Southern book. And both of their books uh, deal with uh, the effect of uh, drugs on uh, the culture there. You may have gotten a little bit of a, a sense from the clip that I chose from the panel about this book, but I thought I'd also read from the flap. College was supposed to be an escape for Emily Skinner. But after failing out of school, she's left with no choice but to return to her small Arkansas hometown, a place run on gossip and good Christian values. She's not alone. Emily's former best friend and childhood crush, Jody Monroe, is back with a baby. Emily can't resist the opportunity to reconnect, despite the uncomfortable way that things ended between them and her mom's disapproval of their friendship. When Emily stumbles upon a meth lab on Jody's property, she realizes just how far they've both fallen. Emily intends to keep her distance from Jody, but when she's kicked out of her house with no money and nowhere to go, a paying job as Jody's live-in babysitter is hard to pass up. As they grow closer, Emily glimpses a future for the first time since coming home. She dismisses her worries. After all, Jody is a single mom. The meth lab is just a means to an end. And besides, for Emily, Jody is the real drug. But when Jody's business partner goes missing and lies begin to pile up, 
Emily will learn just how far Jody is willing to go to save her own skin, and how much Emily herself has risked for the love of someone who may never truly love her back. So yeah, this uh, book has a lot of intriguing elements. There's a, a idea of an obsessive and unrequited relationship in here, which is sort of the theme of uh, my late, late last published short story. So, you know, and I guess that speaks to me too. And then there's also the idea of the drug culture and the questioning of, um, you know, how people get to, into these situations. Like, how do you get to dragged into something illegal and dangerous like this and uh, we talked a bit in the or they talked a bit in the panel about you know poverty and uh, how you know there can be a lack of options and how um, you know trafficking drugs presents itself anyway I also talked in um, a recent video where I reviewed the Mars Room about not wanting to dip into moral relativity when it comes to crime, but I do like the idea of um, exploring why people get involved in it, because usually it's not because they're mustache-twirling villains. <laughs> so that about covers it for me now, coming down from the high of uh, the book festival and the royal wedding, I guess. <laughs> I'm glad I have one more weekend day, but it really is never enough, is it? So, <laughs> guess I'd better go make the most out of it. I hope you enjoyed this little jaunt through my local book fest. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>